Look, we have a tragedy. We're going to do, and, and what happened in Las Vegas is in many ways a miracle. The police department has done such an incredible job, and we'll be talking about gun laws as time goes by. Yeah. With us uh, now from Las Vegas, we've got NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker. Kristen, the president's going to be there later this morning. What in the hell should we expect after yesterday? Well, look, he's going to be on the ground here for about four hours. He will be meeting with victims recovering in the hospital. He's also going to be meeting with first responders. But you're absolutely right. Uh, look, every word and action is going to be under intense scrutiny, particularly in the wake of what we saw yesterday in Puerto Rico. The president of Puerto Rico did have some moments where he was reaching out to those who were dealing with the aftermath of this storm. Uh, but he also raised some eyebrows uh, when he was tossing out supplies, for example. He started tossing paper towels as if they were basketballs. Uh, he praised the federal response. Uh, he, of course, had this back and forth with the mayor leading up to his visit yesterday about the federal response. She had been quite critical. Uh, there was a moment of truce, it seemed. The two shook hands. Uh, but then in the president's public comments, he really only talked about uh, the governor. And, of course, in the wake of his trip, uh, she said that effectively he hadn't done a good enough job of communicating and reaching out to the people there on the ground. And I think what's getting even more attention is the fact that he compared the death toll to Katrina and then joked about how much it was costing uh, the government. So uh, there is going to be uh, a high bar today, I think, for the president. Of course, this is going to be a different visit. I anticipate it will be more somber. But again, every word, every action will be heavily scrutinized, Mika and Joe. Yeah. Chris. And yeah. Uh, you also share the byline for the new NBC News exclusive report about Rex Tillerson nearly quitting the Trump administration. What's the White House saying about that and specifically about Tillerson calling him a moron? Well, the White House isn't commenting publicly on this, but I can tell you uh, I've been speaking to officials behind the scenes who acknowledge that there were some real tensions there. And let me just uh, set the stage for you. In our reporting, uh, we say that back in July, the Secretary of State came very close to effectively quitting. He was frustrated over a number of policy disputes with this president. He was also frustrated by some of the language that the president used uh, in public comments, for example, during that speech that was seen as widely political that he gave to the Boy Scouts. Uh, we are told he was convinced to stay by General John Kelly, who was then the incoming chief of staff, as well as Defense Secretary James Mattis. The vice president also played a role and trying to smooth over tensions. Now, I am told that things have gotten better, mm -hmm. but you talk about that moment, Mika, when during a meeting, the Secretary of State referred to the president as a moron. It's not clear that that story ever made its way to the president, but I can tell you that it did anger those who were close to the president uh, and really, I think, highlighted the fact that there are some real tensions here. And those tensions were on display over the weekend when the president tweeted about Secretary Tillerson effectively undercut the way he's handling with the crisis yeah. in North Korea, saying that diplomacy isn't working. So have these tensions been completely worked out? It doesn't appear as though they have, although uh, one official does stress that progress has been made. Mika All right, Joe. Kristen, Welker, thank you. We greatly I appreciate have a it. different thought about we that. We still have David thank Ignatius you. with us, and let's bring in now NBC News Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent and the host of Andrea Mitchell Reports. Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, what can you tell us about this Well, this relationship? you know, we've been reporting... What? It's such a difficult relationship because Tillerson came into government, as you very well know, you broke the story that he was coming in as the new Secretary of State. He came in not knowing the president, recommended by several, you know, by Condoleezza Rice, by others who knew him well. And he tried to ingratiate himself with the president on the budget by saying he was going to come in and cut waste, and there is in every agency, but 30 percent, he accepted the budget recommendations of OMB. And no previous secretary had ever done that. He so, lost and, and what's so strange about this, and we'll bring David in service, as well, yeah. but he had his first aid at the State Department, and he was widely praised by the I employees. did a story for Nightly News saying this was a huge uh, they success. They were so excited. Exactly. He has good friends with James Baker. He, he was, as you said, recommended by Condi Rice and Bob Gates in a meeting with Donald Trump. It was what, mostly what? Bob Gates and Condi, right. who knew him from ExxonMobil and some work they had done with the company. But what we've been tracking is, the, over Iran, 
there's real tension over Iran because Tillerson kept pushing back and when he did first recertify as the State Department recommended yeah. as the UN weapons inspector said that Iran was complying with the narrow terms of the agreement it was done at a quarter of tw midnight yeah. that letter went out that showed right away that there was huge pushback from Mike Flynn and others in the NSC and then still with McMaster that relationship fraught because of tension with the president's view on Iran right. and the gutter Saudi Arabia dispute which Kushner and, and others had pushed uh, and the president embraced just undercutting Tillerson but this weekend what happened with China here Tillerson was on a quick trip to China trying to placate the Chinese in advance of the president's big trip to China and tell them we're working on diplomacy and the White House was furious that he had right. said that there is a back channel. I know Joe wants to get to David but I'm just curious in the reporting of just what we know about this when the vice president and General Kelly beckoned him to stay was that on behalf of the president? Did, did the president send them to him or did they do that themselves? They did that on their on their own. I mean that was the so-called grown-ups in the room trying to persuade Tillerson that first of all they needed an ally and he had worked very closely we should say with John Kelly when John Kelly was at Homeland Security on the immigration in Mexico part of all of this trying to smooth over disputes and work with the Mexicans after the president's insulting phone call to Peña Nieto so they had a bond initially and, and Madison Tillerson were working very very closely on all of these issues so it was on their own on their own behalf their to own try behalf. to right. keep things square and now uh, can he afford another major departure this would be the most high profile one of all it really would uh, David Ignatius you have you have commented in uh, last hour and also wrote about the fact that Rex Tillerson really doesn't care what official Washington thinks about him he certainly hasn't courted the press just ask Andrea Mitchell <laughs> uh, and and yet I, the, the, the one mystery for me has been the fact that Rex Tillerson is good friends with uh, James Baker, uh, just about as good as any of us have ever seen in, in working Washington, D.C. Uh, Condi Rice and Bob Gates uh, recommending him for this position. And I've been wondering all these months, how, how does he stay in this position? How does he keep his head down when you know he's having conversations with these friends uh, and, and, and associates? and. I guess we learned in this story that perhaps it's not been as easy Maybe for him the president wants him as, to uh, yes, as, I, as we believed. You know, I, I, I can't help but think uh, with a story like this uh, fascinating NBC story that the, the knives are out, that there are people around the president who really want to send a message to, to, to Tillerson. He is a very different person. Um, he, he comes out of running this enormous uh, in some ways remote uh, corporation ExxonMobil um, he really doesn't care what members of Congress think about him so he has not really worked the Congress well he certainly doesn't care what journalists think about him so as Andrea and I know it's very can't remember a Secretary of State it was harder to get to than, than this guy well you know and John Kerry John Kerry was really very shy when it came to Cambridge <laughs> <and> <laughs> oh, I'm joking Mr. Secretary just joking go ahead I'm sorry you could never you could never get John Kerry to say anything no. except every other half hour. Talk about it. Um, so, uh, you know, that's been part of the part that what we what we assumed was that the relationship between Tillerson and Mattis was so close. I'm told that before every meeting in the situation situation room, the two of them figure out a common position that that would carry Tillerson through. The president understood this was his team. He was proud of his team. Uh, we assumed, I assumed initially that uh, Tillerson's statements in Beijing where he, where he said, uh, you know, we have these back channels. He, I think he thought he was doing what the White House wanted. And it turned out he got it wrong. The White House was furious. Why didn't he clear this with us? Why did he talk to, talk to us before he made the statements? It's the kind of thing that, that you've been hearing. So I think we're now in a period where uh, to stay, he's really going to have to, to fix this disconnect between himself and the White House, himself and Congress, they have to work at that very, very aggressively. And that's really not, it's not the way Tillerson's put together. We're going to yeah. go to Mike Bornick in one second, but first let's go to our 
Donald Trump tweet desk. Uh, <laughs> Willie Geist in Hong Kong monitoring that. Can we go remote to Willie right now? There's going to be a little as, delay. Willie. As the president watches the TV this morning, he tweets this. Wow, so many fake news stories today. No matter what I do or say, they will not write or speak truth. The fake news media is out of control. One assumes that this story from NBC News is among those that is criticizing I, today. I guess so. You know, it reminds me of when they uh, refurbished uh, 21. Um, I know. Oh, wait. That's what Puerto Rico needs. That never happened. That kind of work. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, and, uh, and, and David, uh, the CEO aspect of Rex Tillerson wow. is uh, becoming increasingly obvious I to a lot of people. Her. But Andrea and, and David, after I, I've been told repeatedly by several people that the real split right now, nine months into the Trump presidency, at the top of the Trump presidency, are those who serve the country dedicated to moving the country forward as opposed to people who are there serving Donald Trump and his ego and his lack of ideology that, that that's the split at the top of the house well I think it's it's all about loyalty and what really upset the president so deeply was that interview when on Fox News Sunday uh, he was asked by Chris Wallace uh, what about the president's comments on Charlottesville and Rex Tillerson yep. said the president speaks for himself Stone -faced. rather than falling all over himself to try to make excuses for what the president had said. Rex Tillerson is a man of values and nobody has been tougher on him than I in the press corps. No one has had a more difficult relationship. But you have to respect the fact that this man led a global company. He came to Washington to serve. and. If he didn't get it right because he didn't understand public diplomacy and the nature of the press corps and also the need to staff up and get people confirmed and, and create a team rather than the small unit he used to fly around the world with doing deals for ExxonMobil. If he didn't get that right, it wasn't for lack of patriotism. And right. you really have to wonder yeah. how he could be treated so shabbily by the commander in chief. David Ignatius, a uh, bit of breaking news from the Morning Joe family. Uh, Richard Haas, who is, of course, the president of the Council on Foreign Relations and a great book about foreign policy, Willie, and barbecuing. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Haas uh, tweeted this at 7.33 a.m. Rex Tillerson has been dealt a bad hand by the president and has played it badly. For both reasons, he cannot be effective as Secretary of State and should resign. I wonder if more people will be um, saying what Richard Haas uh, said well, earlier this I, morning. Yeah, d worryingly, uh, many of those people may be in the White House. The, 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 I think the point I would make is similar to what Andrew just said. Uh, t Tillerson has really not uh, been a success in any sense in some parts of his job as Secretary of State. He just is not a communicator. But he is a smart, steady person in dealing with mm -hmm. leaders around the world, dealing with the Putins and the Xi Jinpings of China, and even in, in, in trying to find a way to resolve this dispute with Kim Jong-un in, in North Korea. A government without Tillerson's steadiness and experience is going to have a difficult period, especially with so many crises going on. That's something that concerns me. I hope it concerns the president. I, I, David I, let me second that. Yeah. I certainly hope so. If anybody thinks this is a problem, uh, you don't know what the replacement is. You don't know what's coming next. Yeah. I think the president, my instinct is the president wants him to leave. Uh, David Ignatius, thank you. NBC's Thanks. Andrew Mitchell, Well, Mika, thank if you, you could recommend that the president fire him, then you could assure, assure all of us that Rex Tillerson will be there for the, all for four life. years. Yeah. Exactly. No. Job security. Exactly. Okay, no, I just, there's, anyhow. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.